Today we're looking at four potential medications that the WHO is launching a huge multi-nation clinical trial to see if they could be effective at treating coronavirus. We'll get into those four drugs in this video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zach. I'm a medical doctor and ophthalmology resident, and today what I want to go into is four medications that the WHO is launching a very large clinical trial very rapidly at that to see if they could have any effect on treating the novel SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus. So my intent with this video is not to interject any of my own opinions or thoughts on these medications or on the clinical trial itself, simply just to inform you of its existence and which medications they're actually looking at as potential treatments. So if you guys do find this video at all valuable or interesting, leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. So without further ado, let's actually get into the study here. So first off, the name of the study is the SOLIDARITY TRIAL, all in caps, S-O-L-I-D-A-R-I-T-Y, and it is a multi-nation clinical trial. Right now, there are 10 countries that are enrolled in the clinical trial. And the purpose of this trial is to address four different treatment arms. It's actually more than four medications to see if they could have any effect on treating the coronavirus. So on Friday, March 20th, the WHO announced this clinical trial. Before we get into the exact medications that are being looked at, let's briefly talk about how patients are being enrolled in this clinical trial. So if a patient with positive COVID-19 is deemed eligible for the trial, they can be registered by their physician in the WHO's registry, along with any medical comorbidities that they may have. Treating physician will also list which medications they have available to them so that the WHO registry can then randomize the patient to either the control arm or one of the four treatment arms in the trial. So how will they know if one of the treatment works? So it's always important to define the endpoints, define the outcomes of the trial. That's how they know if the intervention is having an effect. One, the day the patient left the hospital or died. Two, the duration of the hospital stay. And three, whether or not the patient required oxygen or ventilation. That's it, those are the outcome measures for this study. The WHO hopes to have data management centers up and running within the next week or so. Scientists at the WHO have been evaluating the research over the past few months to try to decide which potential medications could show the most promise. And we're gonna get into those right now. So the first drug is remdesivir. This is a medication that I alluded to in a previous video. This drug is an antiviral drug. The other name for it is GS5734, and it's produced by the company Gilead. Now this medication was tried against the Ebola virus and showed limited efficacy, but there was some promise in treating the original SARS virus as well as the MERS virus. There's a paper from the Journal of Science and Translational Medicine published in 2017 that I will link down below so you can check that out for yourself. The researchers do note that this drug may lose efficacy as the duration of symptoms and the duration of disease lengthens, similar to the anti-flu medication oseltamivir or Tamiflu. Therefore, suggests that there could be higher benefit with this medication if given early in the course of disease and to less symptomatic patients with milder disease. So the next arm in the treatment group is a combination HIV medication. This medication is lopinavir ritonavir combination and the trade name for that is Kaletra. Lopinavir is an inhibitor of the HIV protease enzyme, and ritonavir actually suppresses the activity of CYP3A, which is an enzyme that metabolizes lopinavir. Thereby, ritonavir allows the lopinavir to stay around longer and exert its effect, and that's the reason for the combination. A very recently released paper in the New England Journal of Medicine, published just March 17th of 2020, actually looked at the effect of this drug combination on treating COVID-19 and they had limited success. To quote from the paper, they said, treatment with lopinavir ritonavir was not associated with a difference from standard care in the time to clinical improvement, which was their endpoint clinical improvement. So it showed no difference getting the drug compared to standard of care. And this was a relatively small study with only 199 patients enrolled. I'll link that study down below so you can take a look at it. So the next medication is actually a combination of lopinavir and ritonavir, similar to the previous treatment arm, with the addition of interferon beta. Interferon beta is a cytokine in the interferon family and is used to treat things such as multiple sclerosis. So there is a double-blinded randomized control trial protocol for enrolling patients with the MERS virus to see if this specific three medication, three drug combo would have effect at treating the MERS coronavirus. Um, however, that study enrollment was very limited and I can't find the actual results for that. This three drug combination will serve as 
the third arm of the study. Now the last treatment arm is going to actually be chloroquine. So we talked in a previous video about the potential use of hydroxychloroquine as a treatment option, but in this study the WHO has actually decided to use chloroquine. Now initially they had planned not to include this in the treatment arm, however because it was getting so much attention from a lot of different Chinese studies where those data sets were actually not readily available to be seen, but because it was getting so much press and so much attention, the WHO actually did decide to include chloroquine as a treatment arm in this study. Again, chloroquine is an anti-malarial drug. It's an old drug. It's been around for a long time. So the WHO actually met in Geneva on March 13th to try to decide whether or not the chloroquine should be included as a treatment arm. I'll link down to the PDF with the, kind of the details of that meeting, the talking points they had, the people that were actually in the meeting, and how they decided on whether or not to include chloroquine. But some of the things that were said about it was that chloroquine is reasonably active in vitro, meaning not in animal models, against SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV, and SARS-CoV-2, the cause of agent of COVID-19, and in vitro studies have shown antiviral activity. It is unclear how this translates into activity in respiratory epithelial cells in vivo. Who notes there are multiple Chinese studies, like I said, evaluating the efficacy of chloroquine at treating COVID-19. Um, the results have been hard to come by. And then they say in this document, as the decision should be taken rapidly based on available data, it was agreed that there is equipoise for the inclusion of chloroquine in clinical trials and to proceed with the evaluation of chloroquine in COVID-19 patients. And so for that reason, they did decide to include chloroquine as a treatment arm in the study. Now, the fifth group, the control group, are those patients that will not receive any of these treatment arms, but will simply get standard of care, meaning supportive measurements that would otherwise be used to treat the patient, such as respiratory support and that kind of thing. And that'll serve as the control group. Because there are so many countries that are participating in this study, it has the potential to draw a lot of patients really quickly and hopefully get results pretty quickly as well. I'll list the countries on the screen here that are participating in the study if you're curious. The point of this video was just to make you aware of this trial, of its existence, and of some of the treatment medications that the WHO is looking at using for the novel SARS-CoV-2 virus. Let me know what you guys think about these treatment options and the study design. I'll link to some of the papers down below so that you can do a little more research on it. If you found this useful, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. EyeballMD, and I'll see you guys in the next video.